In the previous video I explained all the detail about hardware. Now let's take a look at software side. At first let's refresh high level architecture. I have three physical nodes, NAS appliance and obviously network. And here is the same schema, but from this first standpoint. Each NAC node is an ASXI host and at the bottom of the slide you see you can see various virtual machines which I need in order to deploy vSphere itself and also NSX. Obviously we need vCenter VM since it is uh, the key element of vSphere. Depending on your setup you may not need separate VM for infrastructure services like DNS, DHCP, NCP, Active Directory or you may deploy small Linux based VM. But in my case it is Windows Server uh, which acts as DHCP DNS and Active Directory Server. I won't describe NSX part in details right now, but in short you need a lot of VMs uh, to build all necessary planes of NSX. You need NSX Manager, you need NSX Controller Cluster consisting of three VMs and you need two NSX Edge nodes. You need, uh, you, ne you need NSX Edge node itself and you need one more NSX Edge to create NSX DLR VM or which stands for Distributed Logical Router VM. And also on the slide you can see NAS Appliance which obviously provides storage services for our SXI hypervisors. Now let's talk a little bit about vSphere. I use the latest version which is 6.7 at the time of recording. Both ESXi hypervisors and vCenter use this build. There are some different options to deploy vCenter. In my case I used v, uh, vCSA appliance with embedded platform services controller. Also there are different options in terms of appliance size. Since my lab is pretty small, I use tiny deployment which supports up to 10 ESXi hosts or 100 v uh, virtual machines or VMs. It requires two vCPUs, 10 gigs of RAM and 280 gigs of storage. On the slide you can see different screenshots from vCenter, my data center, my cluster. Uh, also, in the previous video, I forgot to mention that uh, I forgot to mention total capacity of RAM in the cluster, but it's pretty easy and obvious. I have almost 96 gigs of RAM. Now let's discuss NSX a little bit. Detailed discussion of NSX product is obviously out of scope of this video and uh, I just want to briefly explain which components are absolutely required in order to play with it. NSX consists of three planes, management plane, control plane and data plane. Each of these planes requires some appliances. NSX manager is a management plane component and it needs four vCPUs, 16 gigs of RAM and 60 gigs of storage. NSX cluster controller consists of three nodes and forms an NSX control plane. Each node requires four vCPUs, four gigs of RAM and 28 gigs of storage. Finally, we have NSX Edge appliance and you probably need two of them, as I had mentioned before. One for distributed uh, routing and one for NSX Edge services. Each uh, node consumes one vCPU, uh, five uh, 512 gigs of RAM, half uh, of a gig, and 1 gig of storage. Also, I need to point out MTU requirement one more time since you really need to satisfy it. Your underlay network, it means your physical network, uh, in other words, must be able to provide MTU of 1600 bytes or more between NSX VTAPs or basically between SXI hosts. In other words, your network must be able to carry uh, 1600 bytes of payload or more inside Ethernet frames. Now let's take a look at overall hardware plane, uh, hardware plan, which I already showed you in the first video. Basically, it summarizes software components requirements. At, the, at least you need 526 gigs of storage, 22 vCPUs 
and 47 gigs of RAM. At this moment, you can probably notice that my environment doesn't satisfy vCPU requirements since I have only 12. Uh, that's correct, but in practice these requirements assume production environment, not a testing lab. And CPU is probably the most tolerable resource in this list, since your lab will just uh, be very slow if it lacks uh, CPU resources at some particular point in time. Storage is a little bit different. You don't need all 526 uh, gigs at the start, but as time goes by, your storage usage increases as well. And if at some point uh, of time your storage is full, it means uh, just that. You can't create any more data unless you delete something. And RAM is probably the worst resource to manage, since many components eat RAM like uh, it is a cake. You may think that free nodes with 16 gigs of RAM which equals 48 gigs of RAM, uh, may satisfy this requirement. But remember that you may have a beefy workload, uh, like for example an SX manager, which requires 16 gigs of RAM. So basically it needs the whole ESXi host in this case. It means you can't uh, run other VMs on it and can overwhelm it uh, as well. So, I recommend you to have at least two nodes with 32 gigs of RAM. You can have 16 plus 8 or even 16 plus 4 uh, if you are stingy. But in Russia we say that a stingy man always pays twice. If you want to add uh, more work on the future and you have both slots already occupy, uh, occupied in your NAC, remember that each NAC has just two RAM slots. So, if you want to add more workload in the future and you have both slots already occupied with 16 and 4 or 16 and 8, you will have to put that uh, 4 or 8 stick out. And maybe you could find another empty slot and uh, your 4 gigs or 8 gigs sticks won't be wasted, but it's also possible that you couldn't find a place for it and you will have to sell it. Anyway, it is up to you to make uh, such decisions. And, one more, and uh, one more thing, in the previous video I forgot to mention total cost of my lab. Here are the numbers. In Russian currency, which is called Rubble, it is, also, it is almost 184,000 rubles. To make your life easier, I, ha I have converted it to US dollars according to current exchange rate, and it is roughly 2,000... Seven hundred and fifty US dollars. I didn't include the price of one SSD drive and edge router since I had uh, had them already. Anyway, if you are interested in prices, please go back to the previous video and look at the description. I have all hardware details there, and you can check prices at your place. Now let me finally show you this lab in action. Here you can see local web interface of the first ASX I note. Second node and third node. There is nothing really interesting here except that all these nodes are controlled by vCenter, so let's take a look at it. This is vCenter web interface, and you can see data center, which has a cluster, and that cluster consists of those three SXI nodes. At the cluster dashboard, we can see overall capacity of my lab in terms of CPU, memory, and storage right here. At storage dash uh, dashboard, we can inspect my primary storage, which is QNAP and all the local SSD storages. For example, ASXi03. Also, I want to mention that I have placed my vCenter VM on local SSD data store for better performance, since it is the most important component in my lab. You can see that QNAP data store has a lot of VMs, ESXi02 has vCenter VM, and ESXi01 
and ESXi03 don't have any VM, don't have any VMs at all. Let's go back to the cluster dashboard. And let me mention that right now I have a number of workloads, not only those which I mentioned during the presentation. For example, I have two DLR VMs for high availability. I have some Microtic appliance, which I really don't need anymore. Two testing workloads, which act as a super simple web servers. And finally, I have VRNI product installed. Let's go further and inspect NSX dashboard. Here you can see overall system status, add installation and upgrade tab. You can find uh, additional information. For example, you can check status of your NSX controller cluster nodes here. Now let me show you NSX Edge load balancer. We can find it under NSX Edges tab, go to the specific edge, which acts as an NSX Edge. It is a little bit confusing that you use NSX Edges for edges themselves and also for DLR, which again stands for Distributed Logical Router. You can see it right here. I have Edge 1, which is uh, type Logical Router, and Edge 3, which is type NSX Edge. And obviously we need this one, Edge 3. Here we need tab called Manage and sub tab called Load Balancer. Under Virtual Service tab, tab we can find our virtual IP, which is 10.10.36.2. And under Pools, we can check out our web servers. We need to go to the show pool statistics hyperlink choose our pool which is pool uh, one and we can see that it has two nodes node 01 and node 02 this uh, lb is configured with round robin uh, scheme of load balancing so let's try to access our virtual ip which is again 10.10.36.2 And we can see that it does just that. It redirects me to a different server each time I refresh the page. So I refresh the page and now I see node 2. I refresh it again and see node 01. Let me explain what happens one more time. I need an empty slide. So. I have my desktop, which I use to record, obviously, this video. And from this desktop, I am accessing Load Balancer, which is a part of an SX product. This Load Balancer redirects me to Uh, to the nodes in the load balancer pool. And those nodes are VMs which are located inside my vSphere. So it is node 01 and this is node 02. Again, I can show you these nodes here. Node 01, node 02 with these IP addresses. And I can show you them here. This is not test 01 and test 02. You can check IP addresses here as well and conclude that uh, they actually match. Names don't match, IP addresses match. Since names are here, Are just names. Are, ju uh, are, are names of uh, cluster cluster members.
Also, it's, it is pretty obvious uh, from my standpoint, I want to mention one more time that NSX and web service nodes are running inside a cluster which is formed by three Intel new physical platforms. So here we have our vSphere and it runs on top of my NUC platforms. I mean NUC physical platforms. I think that's all for now. If you want more details about my lab, please feel free to reach me in the comments. If you like this video, please put a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you later!